The city of Boston is weighing the notion of paying reparations to black residents to atone for slavery and centuries of economic exclusion. But what would that look like? That's the question at the heart of GBH News' podcast, What is Owed? In it, host Soraya Wintersmith looks to the past for answers and to the trailblazers of the fight for reparations. Soraya joins me now. Soraya, it's so good to talk to you about this. Good to talk to you too, Katie. I've been really enjoying listening to your podcast in part because it's it's so broad, right? It looks, you know, you've got local history. The most recent episode travels to Ghana for a really heavy and moving segment there. What, what made you want to zoom out beyond just the the discussion of reparations here in Boston? It's a great question. I think America is at a time where it's really polarized, tense, divided, however you want to characterize it. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's in these moments of tension where we kind of examine ourselves individually and like as a nation to think about who we want to be, what kind of country we want to be. And in that process over the last couple of years, we've seen social justice issues and the thought of equity kind of rise to mainstream. Uh, This issue is one of the things I'm thinking about the state of California, the state of New York, like recently putting together its commission in Mm -hmm. addition to cities like Asheville and St. Louis and all the other localities that are exploring the issue. It's just, you kind of have to (laughs) go beyond (laughs) Boston. And where where is the discussion in Boston at, at this point? This is a matter of perspective. So to start with the facts of it, we have a reparations panel. Mm-hmm. It's been assembled for about a year now. And the city did recently tap the external historians that will sort of create the account of history that's going to inform whatever recommendations the panel ultimately makes. Those are facts. Okay. Now, (laughs) depending on how fast you wanted to see this process move or the manner in which you wanted to see it move, you might have some criticisms about the way Boston is pursuing. One thing that we don't say in the podcast but is true, if you look at Evanston, Illinois, or Amherst just down the road, both of those municipalities have completed their reparations processes, and they started with funding. In other words, the local government was like, we're going to set aside some money. We will figure out the particulars of distribution later. All right. In Boston, we didn't do that. And again, if you listen to the podcast, and I hope everybody does, you'll hear some pointed criticisms about the way Boston has pursued the process. So there's, you know, certainly plenty of thorny issues. Opinions. <laughs> Always opinions here in Boston, Always. right? No shortage of that. And one of the things that I've really found interesting in the podcast is you really do a good job making the case that this is not a new discussion, right? It might have a new prominence, new dynamics now, but you look, you know, hundreds of years ago to the fight for reparations, uh, looking at the the story of Belinda Sutton, who petitioned for a pension from her enslaver's estate. We actually have um, a little bit here, we'll roll, of historian Kira Singleton of the Royal House and slave quarters talking about what that struggle shows about the fight for reparations. What I think is so important to me about people like Belinda Sutton is that it also shows us that black people have always been their own political agents. They have always had radical politics and they have always understood that the freedom that can be extended to them doesn't really matter if it doesn't extend to all black people. So you look that far back, you look at more recent history in the 1980s. Uh, what, What kind of path has already been tread here in Massachusetts? When we were talking earlier, like just as colleagues, Mm -hmm. I was saying to you that I'm hesitant to say a lot about what was surprising or interesting to me about doing this work, but I thought about it, and this might be the most fascinating part of the podcast, I think. Don't hold me to that until (laughs) we're all done with production. But there's lots of fascinating parts. There are. But looking at this part, when we say that Massachusetts is critical to how the rest of the nation functions later on in our history, it is so true with the case of Belinda Sutton, 
it is early, early, early evidence that black people understood that their enslavement was wrong, mm -hmm. that their enslavement was counter in all ways to the ideals of the newly forming nation. And they were very clear-eyed, like in the case of Belinda Sutton and reading her petitions, very clear-eyed about why they deserve compensation and why they shouldn't be enslaved. And I think the same is true for looking into Bill Owens in the 1980s. In episode two, we play some tape that didn't air when he was interviewed um, at GBH for a uh, basic black in like 2000 or 2001. Mm -hmm. And listening to the tape, you can hear he is very clear about the case and his perspective. And I think black people have, have a been piece for of a that uh, oh, okay. as well that we can play from <laughs> Bill Owens himself. My parents did not have slaves. They were enslaved. And in fact, we, I was denied my inheritance of them because they were not even paid for the work that they did. And that's why it is so important that I receive my inheritance more than anything else. Very clear, super resolute. Absolutely. Um, so that's that's been part of the, the discussion of the local history. And, and where do you go from here? What else are we going to hear the podcast tackle? Preview for next Thursday. And again, I hope everybody listens. The podcast travels to Austria um, next week to explore what it took for that national government to move its narrative about being a victim of national socialism or Nazism into owning its own complicity and the reparations funds that come out of that discussion. Yeah, and that's one of the, the questions I think you've been looking at is, or you pose early on, is are, are governments ready to, to face their culpability? Is there an answer to that? Are the they short answer is just some are and some aren't. Um, I think for episode four, it is really, really interesting talking to the Secretary General of the National Fund about what it takes and also talking to an economist who has written extensively about the history of this issue and has a proposal for how federal reparations would work. And we talked to him about what he thinks it would take to move the national government on this issue. Okay, so lots of uh, lots still left to explore, even though you've gone pretty That's far. That's right. Well, I can't wait to, uh, to hear next Thursday's episode and, and keep following the series. Soraya, thank you so much for uh, giving us a little taste of what is owed. Okay, happy to do it. Thank you.